Hello, my name is Neil Davidson and I'm the founder of Raw Umber Studios. Welcome to another online portrait drawing session. This video mimics the structure of a regular life drawing class. We'll show you three photographs on the screen, one for 10 minutes, one for 20 minutes, and one for 30 minutes. And it's your job to draw the photograph that you see. Lizette Dinghamers will be joining us. She'll be doing a demonstration in the bottom corner of the screen and giving hints and tips. Once you've finished, don't forget to post your work to Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber life. Right, let's get started. Hi, and welcome to another portrait video. This week I'll be using charcoal and chalk, and I think we've got a pretty cool model. For the first pose, I won't be using charcoal and chalk, but for those of you who don't have chalk anyway, what you can do as a substitute is you can just rub a little bit of charcoal like I do right now all over your paper and then go in with the rubber. So that's also a way to create highlights. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, instead of that, I'm going to be using chalk. Okay, so let's get started with the pose. I'm just first placing my portrait on the paper. And you can see it's actually slightly turned downwards. And you can see this by the line of his nose, the line of his brow line over there. For instance, also his forehead. If you look at the top of his forehead at the front and the top of his um, head at the back, it all is angled in a similar way. So we can use this as an indicator of the box. Now I know his face is actually um, straight, so it looks pretty much from his chin to his forehead pretty straight. But that's actually because his chin is a bit further out than his forehead, so um, that might be a little bit confusing. So next I'm going to look at how wide the box is versus how long it is. So when I measure it, it should be about exactly the same. So I'm just going to re-measure. You can see I made one, mine a little bit too um, narrow. So I'm going to make the width a little bit wider. Next I'm going to find the midpoint, since this is a profile. I want to find the uh, midpoint of that square, that box that we just made. So I can just put a cross in there. And that midpoint is the uh, place where the ear will be behind. Another useful thing I usually do is divide the face up into three thirds. So I'm just doing that now. And these three thirds will be bottom of the chin to bottom of the nose. And bottom of the nose to brow line. Some people, of course, are not exactly three thirds, but it's a good place to start. So his ear is located roughly between his brow and his nose. And funny enough, his ears are actually a little bit smaller than average. So his ear is located more like halfway the eye socket. So now we've got those basic measurements. I can start sketching in the jaw and the hairline and that sort of thing. So starting with the jaw, it just starts in front of the ear and goes to the point of the chin. And then I can start sketching some of his rough features. So the nose is actually upturned a little bit. And the eye socket is a rough shape. I go from the bottom of the eye socket, which is halfway uh, between the nose and the brow line. And then I sort of join that up with the brow on the top. And then finally, the forehead sort of slopes back a little bit. So I'm just drawing that in. And these things are just things to make him look a little bit more unique and less generalized. Then on top of that, I'm just going to sketch in all the hair.
So you may have noticed I've actually haven't drawn the beard in. And the reason for this is because I tend to put the skull in first, just because the skull is something that's um, never going to move. It's not going to shrink, it's not going to get bigger. Whereas a beard, if you get yourself a haircut, can get smaller or bigger. So it's less consistent. So I now put the beard on top of the skull and hopefully that will give us a more structured head to work with. So now I'm going to go in with my brush. You can also use a stump or your finger or a piece of tissue or something for this. Or even decide not to do it at all. I just really like having a little bit of a blur to my um, shapes. Because a lot of what we're going to do this session is playing with soft versus hard edges between different shapes. At this point, if you would be using a uh, pencil only, it might be a good idea to give a slight blur um, on the whole of the paper. So then later you can pick out the lights with a uh, rubber. Now, because we're already quite far into the 10 minute pose, I'm not actually gonna get to doing the chalk um, on this pose. But what I'm gonna do instead is focus on harder accents versus softer accents. So for instance, the bottom of his beard is a little bit darker, so I can darken that a little bit. And the top of his beard, for instance, is very soft and sort of um, is not a clear point where the beard starts. So I'm sort of like trying to soften that area. The same thing for his hairline on the sides. It's actually a lot more soft and sort of disappears into his skin a little bit more softly. Whereas the back of his head is very, very clear. So I'm just putting put those things in as well.
So this is it for the 10 minute pose. Basically, you want to make sure that you've got your dark shadows in and a nice structured head. And what we're gonna do in a 20 minute pose is we're gonna have everything that we have in this drawing, but then also start pulling out highlights. All right, so here we are for the 20 minute pose. And I'm gonna start in the same way I did as the 10 minute pose. But this time I'm also going to use the white chalk. So like I started before, I will start by putting the, the, the face on the paper wherever I want it. And because this is a straight on face, I'm going to look for that center line that goes from the middle of the forehead to the middle of the chin. Next, just like what I did in the 10 minute pose, I'm going to start looking for the midpoint, which I see is sort of the bottom of his eyes in uh, this pose. And I try to divide the face up into three thirds. In terms of the width of his face, I think that what I see is one third from the nose to the bottom of his chin is equal to the side of his head from the center line to one cheekbone. These measurements are really rough at the start and I always encourage my students not to be too precise with them. And you'll see later as well that um, I've made his face way, way too narrow. So it's always good to make sure that you don't get too attached to your early measurements and just see them as a sort of guideline at the start. Next, what I did is I looked at the widths of his forehead versus cheekbone and his chin. And I see his forehead being the widest part, so I've just put a gentle slope into the box of his head. Now I'm going to do exactly what I did um, during the 10 minute pose. I'm going to start by putting shadow shapes where I see them. And like I did before, I also used a brush to sort of flatten my shadows a little bit. 
so they don't have as much grain going on, which distracts me a little bit. But again, this is completely op optional. Um, it just depends on your style of drawing as well. So now I'm happy with my shadow shapes, I also want to put in light shapes. So in this case, I'm going to start finding the lights in his forehead, and his cheekbone, and his chin, and put those in using my white chalk. If you, like I said, um, you're not using white chalk, you're using white paper, give the whole paper a very gentle rub with some uh, charcoal or pencil, and then use the rubber to rub out all the lights. So now I've basically got three tones. I've got that mid value, I've got the light value or tone, and I've got that shadow value or tone. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit more specific and add more tones on top. So for instance with the darks, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do, um, just like I did in the 10 minute pose, I'm going to start finding the darker accents within the shadows. So I'm not trying to put these darker accents in the lights or on the mid-tones. I'm only trying to find them within the darks that I've already um, developed.
And while I'm doing that, I also can start breaking down the shapes of those dogs a little bit further. So for instance, um, with the eye, I'm now sort of figuring out uh, a little bit more what's going on with that shadow shape. But again, I'm just thinking about shapes and how they relate to each other and really separating them out in my head. So I'm thinking, is this a half tone? Is this a shadow or is this a light? And I try not to mix the three. So now I've spent a little bit of time on the shadows, I'm going to do the same thing with the lights. So I'm going to try and find the lighter lights within the lights. So for instance, in the middle of his forehead, he's a bit lighter than on the sides. So I'm going to try and get a variety in.
Okay, so here we are for the 30 minute pose and I'm going to start this one the same way as I did the 20 and 30 minute pose. And what that means is that I'm going to start with the box and put my main measurements on. So I start with the top and bottom and then um, try to find the cross in the middle. Then next I'm gonna put in the three thirds, which will be bottom of the chin, bottom of the nose, top of the brow. And now I've got those measurements in, I'm gonna go straight into finding my shadow shapes. So the first thing I see is the eye sockets, they come to about halfway horizontally, so to that midpoint that I uh, plotted out. And I'm just gonna go in and put like a nice dark bit halfway to the nose. And later I can cut some of the lights out of that. So now I'm going in with that rubber and I'm just cutting some stuff out and then I'm plotting out where the nose should be. as well as the mouth and the side of the face. And this is all very, very rough. This is his placeholders. I may end up changing the whole drawing after this, but you've got to put something on the paper. Otherwise you just, you're not drawing, right?
Okay, so now I've got everything in and I'm just looking at the tilt of my skull. I think I've kind of overdone it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten all my horizontals a little bit. Okay, so now I'm a bit happier with the tilt of the head and I'm going to put in the jawline and then, just like it in a 20 and 10 minute pose, I'm going to put in the hair on top. Next, I'm going to go in with my brush and try to blend some of the harshness out of the shadows. Afterwards, I'm done with the brush and I'm reasonably happy with my charcoal uh, shadow shapes. Like I said, these are just placeholders. Try and just go for something that's okay to something a little bit more specific as the drawing progresses. And then next, I'm going to do the same thing with the light shapes. I'm going to go in with my chalk or if you're working with white paper with my rubber. And I'm going to just roughly plot out where the light is. And at this point, you can also start getting rid of a bunch of placeholder lines. For instance, on the outside of his face, we don't actually need a dark line there because it's actually lighter than the background. So we need a lighter tone instead of a dark line.
next what I'm going to do is, like I did in 20 minute pose, I'm going to find my darker accents in the shadows. And I'm going to try and make those more specific while I'm at it. So I'm going to start with the brows and then work my way around. And with this, you don't need to be um, finished straight away. I tried to work one minute on the eye sockets and one minute on something else, then one minute on the, S, on the rest. And the reason for that is that I tried to have the drawing developing as a whole instead of just one bit at a time. And this just works for me. So when I'm developing those shadow shapes, you can already start putting in a little bit of texture. So for instance, in this stash, you can see that it's a little bit of hair in that um, shadow shape on the top lip. So I just do it with small little strokes instead of the big blurry strokes that I did for his um, eye sockets, for instance. And I also leave off the blurring effect of my finger or the brush in this case, because I want it to be a little bit bitty.
For his hair, I do a similar thing as uh, what I said earlier. Because there's some texture going on there, I tend to try and just have a little bit of a rougher stroke. And this contrasts nicely with the more soft strokes for the skin, because the skin is generally a little bit more soft, a little bit more round, a little bit more supple, whereas the hair is a bit more coarse. So I'm going to use coarser strokes for the hair. And now is also a good time to have some fun. For instance, I just put like um, the earrings in into his ear, just with little highlights. And that's enough to sort of like hint at um, little details like that.
So with the eyes, just like everything else, I try um, to just look for light shapes and dark shapes. With the eyes, it's really important not to overdo it. Um, I think that many people have a tendency because the eyes are very important to really overdo them. And that's something called overmodeling. And that means that your dark accents are too uh, dark and your light accents are too light. And it just gives a broken up feel. So what helps for me is to keep squinting at it and see, does that accent actually pop out just that much in a photo as well? Or does it maybe sink into the shadows a little bit more? And that gives you a degree of subtlety that's a little bit more realistic.
So this is it for the 30 minute pose. If you've watched my other videos, you can maybe see that this one is a little bit more resolved than the other ones. And it's partly because charcoal and chalk is just a really easy and quick way to work and get a lot of stuff on. So I would use this a lot, for instance, before I start painting to do studies. So it's a nice and quick way of working. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week. Thank you for taking part. Don't forget to photograph your work and post it on Instagram and hashtag it with hashtag raw umber live. I'd like to thank Lizette Dingermans for drawing along with us today. And you can download the photographs you've seen in this week's session from the link I'm about to show you on the screen. You can follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thank you, goodbye. We run free portrait drawing sessions every Sunday at 2 p.m. and figure drawing sessions every Wednesday at 8 p.m. We're now offering a raw Umber subscription where you can watch all our figure drawing sessions, past, present and future, for under £10 a month. See our website for more details.